time to seize the day. Now is the time to seize the day. Send out the call and join the fray. Send out the call and join the fray. Welcome to Buck in the News, presented by the PewterCast. This is our Saturday morning show where we get a chance to sit back and take a look at kind of the news bits and stuff that has happened throughout the course of this week, uh, where we've really not had a chance to do that on our other two shows. I am Brent Allen, your host. With me, as always, is Ren Dax. Ren, how are we doing here at the end of the week? We're rolling along, man. You know, it's, I've, I've come to uh, terms with my disappointment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think being the halfway point of the season of sort has really helped. Uh, you know how players and fans like to break the season down into like four pieces, first four games, next four. Sure. And, you know, quarters. So, yeah, quarters. So mm-hmm. uh, last quarter was bad. Mm-hmm. First quarter was OK. Uh, so I'm just turning the page. And yeah, so. Everything's good at Casa de Ren. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, it's uh, It's been a weird week for me, uh, particularly in the podcasting world. Um, so. Well, we have – we are not the, the earliest podcast uh, to get our, our big shows and stuff to come out throughout the week. But we are the, we are the podcast that has – we have two podcasts that come out so early in the week um, – and even earlier when you consider when we're recording them. Um, right. And by, by no means am I saying we're absolutely the earliest or we're the first, but we, we're we really far up there. Um, we, we've we had a couple of – so we've – by the time we hit you know the midweek point, we've already kind of hashed everything out on our side, right? But the yeah. remainder of the Buccaneer podcast, which I do still like to listen to, um, mm-hmm. they're still – in their mode of kind of hashing it out. So this week's been a little weird on that, on that front of like listening to, to some of the new ones as they're coming out throughout the week. Um, still in this, this rehashing mode coming to grips with where we are as a team. And um, it, it, I don't know. It's just been a, it's been an interesting week. Not interesting. That's not even the word it, and not depressing. I don't even know what the word is. It's just been, it's been a funky week. You know, uh, as Hasn't a Bucks, been entertaining, entertaining podcast. Entertaining is not the word I would use. That's, that's it's, it's, it. Sounds like you're you're sort of what I was saying is you've turned the page. Uh-huh. And since you know we do have two podcasts, uh, if if you say the podcast week begins the minute the Bucks, you know, Bucks game's over that uh-huh. Sunday, right. right after the Saints game. If you say that's from the beginning, I mean by Wednesday morning. Which is only you only got you got rest of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and by Wednesday morning we've already had two. Yeah, that's like less so, than sixty hours after the game is over usually, or somewhere right, around there. Yeah, right. We have two out, and we've already recorded the second one Tuesday night. So right, we've already you know is catharticism a word? We've already had our catharticism. <laughs> Cath- yeah, I don't know, but that's so. Anyway, it, it, it's it's just been kind of a kind of a weird week as a Bucks fan. Um, I think this week more than any other, I have made it a point to wear my gear uh, just oh, throughout yeah. the week. Um, you know, still love this team, still supporting this team, and still proud to be a Bucks fan in um, Jacksonville. Huh? In Jacksonville, no less. Right, and uh, you getting any feedback? Because you know they're having a good year. Uh, you know, you know, it's it's weird living here in Jacksonville. You wouldn't know from around the town that the Jaguars are having a great year. Like life just kind of goes on as normal. Nobody really talks about it. Nobody's really, you know, jumping up and down and painting their face or, you know, what it's just, there's people who, who wear the gear and just kind of move on. And, you know, the conversations that you, you have with, you know, as guys, when you just kind of uh, conversations I have with other dads, you know, uh, from my kid's school, it never comes around to the, to the Jaguars. <laughs> it's, huh. We'll be talking about college ball. We'll be talking about other NFL teams, but it never comes around to the Jaguars. So college you never ball. know. Yeah. How do you talk about college ball being a Kentucky fan? Well, basketball season is upon us. And <laughs> okay. actually, Kentucky football should be in a bowl game this year. But uh, usually that's me just sort of standing next to them with my Bucks gear on, smiling, and just going, huh, that sounds good. All right, yeah. cool. Florida so State is having a rough year. Yeah. <laughs> I heard USF is uh, probably going to have the best game in Ray J this week. So, hey. Um, Hi-oh. 
Hey, oh, well, enough of all of that, guys. Uh, here we are, uh, as we mentioned at the top of the show, this is where we get a chance to take a look at the different news news articles or the, the news bites that have come out of One Buck this week, uh, things that we haven't really had a chance to talk about just yet or maybe want to dive a little bit deeper into. Uh, we usually start this by talking about the transactions, and we'll talk about all those news things. We'll finish up by taking a look at the injury report and uh, taking our stab at uh, the inactives list and how that's going to affect our game going in uh, to this weekend uh, now that everything is kind of done. The week, the work week for the Buccaneers is wrapped up. All we have left is just to play the game. Uh, so with that, let's go over to the transactions reports. Uh, last week it was completely devoid. We had nothing. But this week we do have something. Uh, new cornerback that we signed about two weeks ago, Desi Olatoye. Uh, we have waived him. Dejai Okunbole. Something like that. It's um, one, of those, one of those two. I'm pretty sure that I wasn't allowed to play with those kind of boards when I was a kid because they thought that they would summon ghosts. My parents DG did. Luigi? Mm, something like that. Uh, but we waived him and the corresponding Were move. Were you really not allowed to play the Ouija boards? Uh, Is it frowned upon? I, I, we just never had them in the house. Let's put it that oh, way. There you go. There's a lot of things that my parents, I don't want to say they didn't let me do. We just never talked about it, if that makes sense. So Sure. But moving on, uh, we we waived him, and uh, the corresponding move to that is that freed up the space on the roster to activate Ryan Griffin off the injured reserve list. So Ryan Griffin is back, quarterback um, extraordinaire. He was looking really good in pre-camp, uh, pre-camp, uh, preseason, Ren, uh, training camp, uh, was yours and mine pick to stay as the backup quarterback to Jameis, um, not really <laughs> thinking that the Buccaneers would keep three. But they, uh, I don't want to say lucked out, but, you know, the the situation worked out where they were able to keep all three and just tuck Ryan away on um, injured reserve because he had a, a pretty, uh, pretty. I don't want to say it was a bad injury. It just looked a lot worse than it was. Uh, kind of same thing happened to Jameis. Yeah. He got hurt yeah. a little harder. Yeah. So uh, excited to see him come back. Um, yeah. Any Any thoughts on Ryan Griffin before I move on? Well, I've gone on record saying that if you if everything was equal, Ryan Griffin had the best training camp. Mm-hmm. And if, if and I want to talk about that later, by the way, because I've I've got some new thoughts on that. All right, as we go into it, uh, but we'll get to that and, later. So. And I think you know he he probably should have won the starting job. All things being equal, um, won course, the starting could, job. You mean the the starting backup job? No, I mean all things. If Jameis Winston wasn't a number one pick, oh, you know, oh, let's okay. say, yeah, I mean, if you were just grading, if everything's equal, as you don't bring in like money or draft pick or mm-hmm. you know experience, like whoever, like he knew the offense best, he threw the ball the best, he ran the offense, you know, who had the best just, camp? He had the best camp. Okay. He did. So, um, like you said, we definitely both thought that he was going to win the, the starting backup job. Sure. Uh, so it's good to have him back. And, you know, even though I do think that this offense is going to uh, run a little more efficient under Ryan Griffin, mm-hmm. or excuse me, Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, I, at some point I really want to see Ryan Griffin in there with the ones. Um, yeah. It was something, you know, I was clamoring for during the preseason and then right before the preseason start there signed Ryan Fitzpatrick and, you know, Brian Griffin back, you know, playing with some of the twos and, and a lot of the threes. So, mm-hmm. uh, I do, I would like to see him at some point this year, especially if Jameis has to shut it down for the entire rest of the season, mm-hmm. uh, Ryan Griffin to get in there see what he can do. I agree. I would love to see that. Um, I have a feeling though that Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to sh- come out and show us, why he is a a why he's a guy who has started 116 games i think i think we're gonna see ryan fitzpatrick in a light that we've never seen him that's just a prediction it's a gut feeling although given my druthers there's a good southern word for you there ren given my druthers i'd i'd much rather see uh ryan griffin Uh, i want to see what he can do you know exactly i just want to see what he can do because as you say if if training camp is any indication um is this guy going to take over Jameis' spot? Is this guy going to light it up and become a future Hall of Fame quarterback? Probably not, but I'd like no. to see what he could do. I'd really like to see what he could do. At the very least, you know, quarterbacks are in a premium position, and if sure. you could turn uh, 
if you could turn him into a draft pick later on down the road and then draft another quarterback, you know, in the late rounds and, and uh, you know, bring him along as Jameis's backup, then, you know, by all means. And mm-hmm. that, that's sort of the reason I really want to see him. It's because I, I think you can turn it into into something like you can turn it into he's a commodity and he can, mm-hmm. be, you know, sold as one mm-hmm. being a little too heartless. But, yeah, that's what I think. All right. Uh, up next, we signed a new defensive end to the practice squad, Patrick Gamble. Uh, no surprise there. Definitely seems like we're bolstering that that defensive end spot, looking for somebody who might be able to come in and do and do anything, something. Uh, as we know, Mike Evans is suspended for this game, so he is not going to count against our roster. And the corresponding move with that is the Buccaneers uh, signed Freddie Martino off the practice squad, uh, which is right. what opened up that space for Patrick Gamble. Uh, signed Freddie Martino to the uh, uh, full roster, to the active roster. So he'll be in uh, really just kind of as a as another piece uh, with Mike Evans being out this week. Um, not a big surprise there, uh, if, I think, if anyone would have thought about it. but um, no. No, not at all. You know. And neither is the gamble signing, really. Sure. I, you know, that's for, you know, Golston's down. That's mm-hmm. our third defensive end. Mm-hmm. You know, you could have called all those defensive ends that are that are out, uh, you know, potential starters. Or sure. at least Jocko Smith was going to be, you know, heavily uh, featured in, in the pass rush package. So you could call him a starter. And him, mm-hmm. he's gone. No expenses down. Now Golston's down. Like, you know, you need you need bodies, man. Mm-hmm. And I would I would fully expect to see when when uh, Mike Evans comes back, barring any other injury to any wide receiver guys, just look for it next week. I think Freddie Martino is going to be released. See him go through waivers, and we'll try to get him back on the practice squad again. So, yes, and and then Proctor and Gamble will be gone. P and G. There we go. So so that is your transactions for the week. Uh, the big news there, the big one though, obviously more than anything else, is Ryan Griffin uh, coming back from injured reserve. Yeah. All right. Rena was a little bit of a light uh, headlines week, news week from the Buccaneers organization. A lot of the the same rumor mills and stuff that have been going around for the last couple of weeks have continued to swirl. A lot of stuff about the coach and losing the locker room and will he be gone and John Gruden and all this stuff that has been up in the air. So uh, unless there, you have something burning about that, I'm going to, I'm going to set that aside. Cause it, that's not new this week. Like that's just all been swirling around and has continued to be talked about a little bit this week. So, um, but I do have one thing for John Gruden that I, that I thought was kind of neat. Uh, he was on rich eyes and show. I want to say this was earlier today, uh, all which right. is Friday. It might've been yesterday I, on Thursday. I and missed this rich Eisen. uh, specifically asked John Gruden if he's coming back or if anyone has talked to him about coming back. And John Gruden deflected that thing like a Jedi deflecting a, a blaster blaster beam. You know, he stayed really <laughs> tight lipped about it. Um, and what did he say? He was, well, you could, you could probably go find the clip. It's, it's floating around yeah. there on Twitter, but basically he's like, ah, well, you know, here's the deal. I'm doing Monday night football. I'm really happy doing what I'm doing. I like this gig. I'm, you know, I'm just going to focus on this. I'm going to travel with the team. I've got a lot of stuff that, you know, I'm pretty happy with doing, but let's just say I'm keeping my options open. I'm keeping right. my, I like to keep my options open. So he was very noncommittal. He, did not answer the question if anyone has called and talked to him. He's like, you know, I take phone calls every once in a while. People uh, calling me and asking me if I'm available or getting my opinion or asking me if I know anybody who's available. Um, so, you know, the answer is, is yes, he has taken calls. Uh, the other subtext to that is, is this isn't the first time. This isn't the first offseason people have called asking if he's available. You right. know, um, he's not giving anybody any specific information about who might be calling him right now or who might have been calling him here in the last couple of weeks. Um, and he's he's certainly not committing to staying with Monday Night Football. You know, a lot of people say, oh, there's no way he's leaving Monday Night Football. He's making $30 million a year and he's got a cush job. He's not going to come off that for, you know, $5, $10 million to coach a team again. He might. He might. Uh, he's, he's just keeping his options open, but he's not committing to doing it either. So, um and he, and he shouldn't. I mean, he if he came yeah. out and said, like, you know, Team X has contacted me. Well, no one's been fired yet as a head coach. So that would right. be really, that'd be really like snake in the grass, you know, something to say. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and, to bring and, up and I mean, honestly, you do that right now. Swirling. Yeah, I mean, let's let's say he comes out and says, "Yeah, you know, I talked to Joel Glazer the other day, and he was asking if I was wanting to come back. Uh, uh, put yourself in Cutter's position, or any of the players in the locker room, or any of the the assistant coaches. All of a sudden, you're going, "What the hell, Season's man? Over. Yeah, job's over. What the what the? I mean, that's just that's just not cool. You don't do that. Like that's not cool. That's not <laughs> not cool, man. Not um, cool, John. Not, not cool. cool. Right. Uh, you know, and we know how tight lips the the Glazers are. I mean, if John Gruden came out and said that, the Glazers would be like, um, yeah, we're we're not going to hire you now. Like, so he's he's got to you know he did the right thing. He answered the best way he needed to, but you know, it's a lot of uh, nudge nudge wink wink. I'm not saying that that means that he is going to be the next Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach. I'm not saying that Cutter's going anywhere. I'm not saying that I think he should. I'm not saying that I think it should be Gruden. I'm just saying I found this very interesting giving, you know, the the conversations that have been happening the last couple of weeks. And right, right. Uh, that's about the newest news bit, I think, that I found. Uh, why don't we go to the big stuff this week, uh, Ren, which sure. revolves around Jameis and Mike Evans. Yeah. Uh, as we know now, Mike Evans and Jameis will both be out for the game. Mike Evans is out due to a suspension, and Chris Godwin will be stepping up, taking first-team reps. He has been in practice all week. At least that's been reported. Um, thoughts on that? Good. You are you are correct. Is, it, is this is this the wide receiver equivalent of seeing Ryan Griffin come in at quarter uh, come in at quarterback? No, no. And just simply because the quarterback position is is such a uh, – it's so important to every NFL team. You mm-hmm. know, wide receivers, you know, I don't, obviously Mike Evans isn't a dime a dozen wide receivers. But, they, but you know, NFL wide receivers, there's always somebody available on the waiver wire that will get you 10 points a week in fantasy mm-hmm. football. So um, – but it is, it, 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 it is exciting because, you know, we heard so much good buzz around the kid in mm-hmm. training camp and, you know, and how mature he was and, you know, how he knew the playbook right away. And, you know, they're just, you know, sort of the staff was blown away. Like, whoa, okay. All right. Mm-hmm. You know, and he had a good camp. Be- I mean, yeah. not just what we heard, what we saw. He had a good camp. Yeah. He's every time he's gotten in, he's had a, he's had decent reps, you know, with the team whenever he's been given an opportunity. So, you know, to see him step up, it should be, it, it should be fun to see what the kid has for a game. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I know by no means am I, you know, pounding the drum going, you know, yay, Mike Evans is sitting. Now we can finally see what Godwin can do. But mm-hmm. it's it's a nice it's a it's a little, you know, a nice nugget to have that if, you know, and, you know, your star wide receiver has to miss a game. At least there's, you know, there's somebody that you're excited to see coming up behind him instead of, you know, you're, you're you know, face palming yourself and going, oh, God, like this is, you know, they're going to double cover D Jackson. We're not going to be able to get any yards because. Mm-hmm. This this fourth wide receiver is terrible. Mm-hmm. Yep. And speaking of DJX, Ren, you were you were saying something to me before the before the show started. Why don't we go ahead and tackle tackle that deal with with him? But, yeah, it was earlier in the week, and um, Todd Munkin had mentioned something how uh, DJX had his best two games, at least consistency wise. I believe was sort of how he worded it. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the Buccaneers, um, you know, and it was he talked a lot about body language and frustration, and and you can only control what you can control, and uh, it just sort of made it sound like, and then and then of course Cutter was the next uh, press conference, and you know, they followed up with him about it about the D Jacks, and you know Todd Monk had said those are probably the best two games he's played. Do you agree with it? And, you know, Dirk Cutter said, Yeah, I do. Well, I found head scratching is you know. This is Deshaun Jackson's tenth year in the league. Uh, mm-hmm. He was at OTAs, not a lot of them. He was mostly in California working with the track coach on his speed, but he was here for all the training camp. Uh, then they had an extra week of practice because the Miami game uh, was canceled, and then now he's had six weeks with the team, and it took him that long to learn what he's supposed to do in this offense. I, I, that to me is 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 head scratching and. I think that question needs sort of to be followed up on. Mm -hmm. And why did it take, you know, two and a half months, three months for Deshaun Jackson to figure out where he's supposed to be and what he's supposed to be doing? Uh, Not only in the offense, but, you know, as as for the team and maybe Mm -hmm. even 
uh, locker room wise? Like what took so long? You know, the bigger question that that brings up to me when you start talking about that is, you know, for all these chemistry issues that we've been talking about all season long between him and Jameis and, you know, Mm -hmm. you got to throw in the injury and, and sure, uh, you know, Jameis may not be able to tell us why that the injury was having an effect, but we can just say that the injury was having an effect. So you've got to throw that in there, but to, to sit back and say, what was up? Why was Jameis not able to get Deshaun the ball? Because he was either overthrowing him, underthrowing him, uh, you know, throwing a little cl- too close to the sideline, you know, whatever, whatever that is, it does beg the question of, uh, for as much of that as we've laid at Jameis's feet, how much of that actually might go back to Deshaun, you know, whether Deshaun overran or underran his route possibly, or got too far over. I, and I don't know. I, I it just, yeah. it just makes me, it just makes me kind of want to go back and look through that and go, well, how much of that was Jameis versus how much of that was Deshaun um, in, in the not working out. But I think you're absolutely, you also have a good point of, all right, man, you, you, there's only so many ways you can run a route in the NFL, yeah. right? I mean, you've been doing this for 10 years. Like, you know, you know how what it is to be around know where to be. Sure. Um, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Jameis, though, speaking of him, let's go back to him. Uh, Big news about Jameis Winston. He is out. They have finally conceded that his shoulder is injured, and the only way that it's going to get better is to rest it, which is basically what the fans and you and I, Ren, have have been saying, I think, really, for the last couple of weeks of let his shoulder get better. There's no reason to risk the the future of the franchise on the season anymore. Um, the bigger news though, coming out of that is that this week, uh, Jameis went to see Dr. James Andrews, which never bodes well when, when players are seeing him, that's usually the, the more serious stuff. Um, Jameis, uh, in a press conference was like, yeah, you know, I saw him back in college. We were just kind of catching up, shooting the shit, went golfing, um, no, they didn't really go golfing. But, I mean, you know, Jameis tried to play it off like it was nothing. But, uh, Ren, what, what do you think about this? Jameis is out. Dr. Andrews is in, so to speak. Yeah, uh, well, I first off, I, I don't want people to think that I was clamoring for them to sit down Jameis Winston. Uh, what mm-hmm. I was saying, and maybe you too, I might have just misunderstood what you were trying to get across, but – if it got to a point where, you know, the doctor shut him down, it, it's time to shut him down. You know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. if since there was no threat of further injury per probably Dr. James Andrews, because Dirk Cutter did say that he's been in on this conversation since Jameis hurt his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Dr. James Andrews says, oh, no, you can play. It's going to hurt. But if you can play through it, you know, you can play. There's no there's no. Uh, chance of of hurting your AC AC joint further. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but I don't I don't think it's a huge red flag that he went to go see Doctor James Andrews. You know mm-hmm. these guys are worth a lot of money, and mm-hmm. if you if you have a you know an injury that requires an orthopedic surgeon and you want to get a opinion about that. Uh, that's the guy to go see, you know. I feel like mm-hmm. I've been hearing Doctor, you know, James Stephen. What is it, James Andrews, Stephen Andrews? I think uh, it's James. Yeah, I think it's James yeah. Andrews. Yeah, yeah. Can't believe I messed that up. Uh, I've been hearing. I feel like I've been hearing his name since I was a teenager, as being mm-hmm. the guy, the go-to guy. I, you know, he was sort of when when I first started watching sports, you blew your ACL, your career was over. Like mm-hmm. that was it. Uh, so he might have been the guy that you know sort of uh, pioneered the you know. Taking the, uh, the come joint at, yeah, take the joint out of cadaver and you know same size, same weight, and slapping it on, and eventually coming back. And it seems that now it used to be like a full year, you know, or a mm-hmm. year and a half. Now you know Kendall Beckwith came back in nine months, so right. uh, I'm glad he's in on the conversation. You know, sure. uh, the more opinions you can get about Jameis' shoulder, the better. Uh, so you make a more informed opinion. So I, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm glad they went there. Uh, Mm -hmm. what I don't really understand is why he had to go see him. Well, you know, what's the difference? Uh, you know, we've all been to the doctor and, you know, the doctor comes in and slaps the x-ray up there and he points with his pen and tells you what's wrong. And Mm -hmm. he tells you what he's going to do when he walks out. Well, you can do that over the phone. You know, I'm sure is the, is the name for it. 
Yeah, well, I mean, you know, yeah. what's he what's he gonna do? Uh, you know, I guess hook Jameis up to machine, and, you know, maybe an ISO machine. But you could, you know, the Bucks, you know, I'm sure there's one in Tampa somewhere mm-hmm. where they could just send him the test results. I don't understand why he had to go have a face to face with the guy, uh, but you know, maybe he just they just wanted to to feel better, or maybe mm-hmm. there was something you know he wanted to. I just don't see there's nothing they couldn't have done with like video or sending him. Obviously, he had already had the X-rays, but I, I, I just don't get why he had to fly to Pensacola to go see the guy. But you know, besides that, good, yeah, good. Doctor James Andrews in on it. Good, glad to hear it. I I like the idea that you're saying it's not as big of a deal as people are making out of it. Like it's it's just if you have an injury of this caliber with this caliber of person, that's just who you send them to. Like it doesn't yeah. mean. It doesn't mean much because everything that I keep hearing is, oh, if you go see Dr. Andrews, mm, it's not good. They only bring him in for the big cases. And, I, you know, I, I know it is a big case. Him. It is a big case. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's not the, it's it's not like he shredded his, his shoulder or maybe he did. But, I mean, the, the reports is not it's not that serious. It's just you're getting the best guy to look at it. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It, if I'm a doctor. You know, and, and Dr. Andrews, if he's been around for as long as as long as we know he's been around, I at some point you're probably going to want to physically examine your patient. You know, you can do so much with with uh, the X rays and all of that, but you know, if you're if you're pay, <laughs> if you're this important of a guy, you know, and if Dr. Andrews has been around for as long as he's been around, I'm sure at some point he wants to put his fingers at certain points in the joint and let Jameis you know rotate his arm and see if he feels anything or see. You know, some sort of an actual examination, but um, I guess I just think you know, like, what would you say, telemedicine? It's telemedicine, yeah, and yeah. It's telemedicine. supposed to be the new wave. You know, you don't need to actually go see the doctor; they can just, you know, you don't, <laughs> you don't, yeah. I, I, you really don't. Like, why do you have to go see the doctor? Yeah. You know, I've been to the doctor a hundred times. He's probably laid hands on me physically, like what, seven, eight times. Mm-hmm. You know, it, there's it. It is a growing thing, but. Uh, this podcast is not about telemedicine. This is about the Buccaneers. <laughs> uh, and, and to be clear, I want to I want to jump back to uh, if in case I wasn't clear, I you and I ran. I think we were saying the exact same thing about Jameis. Of listen, if medically he they say he can go, then yes, you want Jameis in there. But it, it, I think what I always said was if it's medically necessary or even medically recommended that he sits, uh, I want to see him sitting. You know, it's, yeah. it's just not worth it. And, you know, at that point, you you just depend on what they say. But I think everybody has had that thing where they sit there and they go, you know, uh, I'm not a doctor, but should he really be playing? Is well, this really if you're OK? Winning, like, if you're winning, it wouldn't, you know, it, it would if the Bucks are winning, not we, if the Bucks are winning, it wouldn't be a thing. It would be, hey, we're, you know, his shoulder's a little sore, but we're winning. Keep him in there. But now when we're losing mm-hmm. and, <laughs> you know, well, then like, you have right, what? And this Are may be why him? this may be why we actually sent him because you had some guy who watched some film or something out in California who looked down and said, "Oh, Jay, Jameis is his torn his rotator wrote, cuff." Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, well, okay, but he didn't have the test results. So anyway, um, yeah, or the X-ray or nothing. Yeah, he watched some tape. Right. But anyway, I just want to finish up with with uh, Andrews. Is uh-huh. I think it's a really uh, great sign that there is no surgery. You know, where it's take two weeks off, see where we are from there. Right. Because if he went in there and, you know, obviously seen all the x-rays and then, you know, examined him because he had to do a face to face. Apparently that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he could have, you know, it quite easily just been, Hey, you know, you need to shut it down and we need to book, you know, an operating room. You mm-hmm. need to start. We're, we're going to have to fix this. We're going to have to, you know, get under the knife here. And it's, and that's not in play and it doesn't sound like, uh, like it is in play. Mm-hmm. So. Now I, I got to tell you, I know they've said two weeks. I and I have nothing to go on other than just sheer gut feeling. I don't think he's going to be out for two weeks. Can I think he's going to be out longer. Uh, no, I don't think he's going to be out next week. I think he's going to be out longer. The, the other yeah, way. so do I. Yeah, I, I two weeks just seems way. He might be back to throwing in two weeks in practice. I don't think he's playing in two weeks. Um, just a just a gut feeling. Uh, with all of that, um, Jameis said something that is very much related to this, but I think bigger than this as well. Uh, and I believe this was in the post-game interview in the locker room 
after the Saints game. I if if memory serves right, this is this is where I heard him say this. But uh, so I think people were asking him about the the eating the W and the pregame speech and leading the team and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Jameis kind of said he said after the game he's like, listen, right now I've got to work on me. I've got to get myself better before I can lead this team. Right. Uh, and that may not be an exact quote, but I'm that's pretty dang close to what he said. Uh, I love that. I love I love the fact that he can he can take that point and step away and and realize that hey he's got to get he, he's he's got to focus on him. Uh, some of that I think a lot of that had more to do with uh, not just getting his shoulder better, but uh, if you're going to lead a team, you've got to go out and play well too. You know, if you're going to try to go get everybody hyped up, yeah. you at least have to be playing well. And Jameis unfortunately hasn't been playing well. Uh, due to whatever reason, uh, injury or something else, or more, or some combination thereof. Um, uh, the idea that Jameis has to work on himself and, and get some stuff right with him so that he can actually be playing to a level where people will start listening to him, uh, I'm glad he recognizes that. I'm glad he he understands that, and you know, I think Jameis is the kind of guy who he is going he will make good on that promise. He is going to work on that and make that happen so that he can come back and lead this team and do what we need to do uh, to be the quarterback that that we and I don't mind using the first por- the first person pronouns there that we uh, need him to be. Yeah, I'm with you. We we've talked a little bit about it. Mm-hmm. Um, how maybe Jameis doesn't have to be the uh, motivator, uh, you know, be everything to everybody on this team is face the franchise, you know, quarterback, mm-hmm. emotional leader, motivator. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's human nature, no matter what it is, mm-hmm. you, you know, it's, there's, there's maxims and, and sayings that have been around, you know, for years about it, you know, sort of like people who live in glass houses, don't throw stones. So, sure. you know, it's like, you know, like a starting pitcher for your baseball team, you know, Mm -hmm. telling you that, uh, you need to get in front of the ball. Well, keep the ball in the ballpark. That's why we're losing eight to one because they have four dingers, you know, like (laughs) shut your mouth and you do your job (laughs) and I'll do mine. So, uh, I'm glad he did say that because yeah, it's real hard to, uh, hear sort of this fire and brimstone from somebody who who's not you know not even taking care of of their own house so to speak sure and and another thing too that i was thinking about this and this specifically goes to the the big rah-rah speeches and and him leading the team and whatever that looks like he's 23 right Mm -hmm. you know 23 is about that age for me that i i was a year or two out of college at that point got your first ouija board yeah, because nobody could say no. And I said, how much money am I going to make? And they said, N- I moved it to the six numbers. Anyway, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> but it, it was about age 23 that I can remember being in this spot where I still wanted to hang out with all the college kids. I still wanted to do all the things that college kids did. I, I still liked the stuff that college kids did. But when I went to go do that kind of stuff with them – I was kind of the old creepy people like, Hey, you know, you know, what class are you in? I was like, Oh yeah, I graduated like, you know, two years ago right? and I'm still hanging out with you guys. Like, uh, it, it was that point that I remember going through this transition of, Hey, I'm not in college anymore. Like I'm, I am becoming an adult. Like I, I have different responsibilities. My life is changing. I'm, I'm not there anymore. And I wonder if Jameis might be going through a little bit of that right now, you know, because the 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 rah rah speeches and and what he's been doing almost seems like it's at a college level and not a professional adult men's level. It, it's just just kind of looking at it. So I wonder if some of that is just it's a part of that maturation process. Um, and could uh, be. yeah, could be so. Uh, but anyway, so that's Jameis. Jameis is out, which means uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick is in. And so mm. he will be our starting quarterback. Uh, beardless Ryan Fitzpatrick. Beardless Ryan Fitzpatrick. Is he grown out a mustache? Is he, did he shave it off so he could grow the mustache for Movember? Uh, I, I shaved off I, my I, facial hair for that. I'm, I've, got, I've got this great little seedling of you know <laughs> hair 
of a, a mustache. Oh my god, it's horrible. I I'm I, I was looking at it today. And I was like, man, I'm 37 years old and I can't grow hardly anything. That's that's horrible. Um, It'll come sad. in around around uh, the draft. Yeah, the NFL draft. <laughs> right. You'll be you'll be sporting a nice mustache. A little little pencil thin one probably about then, but uh, hey, uh, at least for right now, my my hairline's not receding, so I at least have that going for me. Uh, never could grow a beard. Always wanted one. But Fitzpatrick is in beard. Was that list. a shot? Was that a ball joke? Shot? Not at all. Not okay. at all. That um, like... That's uh, no, because I prefaced it with I can't grow a beard to save my life. Uh, Fitzpatrick is in beardless Fitzpatrick. Not that's not super big news. However, I, I kind of referenced. I wanted to come back to this thing about Ryan Griffin in training camp. Oh yeah. Uh, Fitzpatrick said in his press conference. I want to say it was his press conference that he almost retired at the end of last season mm-hmm. and he wound up coming back and it was in the Arizona game when he got in at the Arizona game that he was finally reminded of how much he really loves this game and he loves getting to do this. I for one loved hearing hearing that because I I want a guy who's coming in who loves what he's doing. You know, even as a backup, I want you to l- like have some passion about the game. Because I got to tell you, through training camp and and up through at least that last little bit, Ryan Fitzpatrick has never looked like a guy who was excited to be around. You know, and he looked terrible. And he looked terrible. And Remember I was what a terrible training camp he had. Exactly. Well, the word I've got for it here in my note is lackadaisical. <laughs> it was a lackadaisical training camp for for Ryan Fitzpatrick. And if that's because he was really in his head, going, maybe I should have retired. Why did I come back? Like it might account for that. Now I'm not saying that that's an excuse because he, if he signed that contract, he need to come out. He needs to play balls out. He needs to compete. But if if there is a, a switch that is flipped with him, because all of a sudden he's reminded of how much he loves this game and in where he's going with it, that only means good things for the Buccaneers right now. I mean, bad things that Jameis is out, but but dealing with the situation that we're dealing with, I think that only means good things. I still want to see Ryan Griffin when he can get in there. I really, really want to see that. But that's more of personal curiosity than it is, you know, uh, yeah. professional stuff. But uh, I'm glad to hear that from Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick. And I do think that that might account for, like I said, a little bit of a lackadaisical training camp. Once again, could be. Maybe. I really don't have I, – I don't, I don't yeah. really have much to say on that. Uh, sure. Just because, like, I don't necessarily agree with it. Um, I could care less if he's excited or not to be in there. Just win me a ball game. Like I'm at that point. You know your pass fail on team mm-hmm. grades. Yep. Yeah. I'm just like <laughs> I, I don't care if you're happy to be there. I don't care if you're just place collecting a check. I, I don't. You know. I, at this point, I don't care if you don't pay taxes and you park in handicap spots. Uh, I, I just really want a win, so I don't have to feel this way. Like mm-hmm. I've felt the past, you know, five six weeks. I have one hundred percent. It's your fault, Tampa. It's all your fault. Your fault. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see here. Eh, this isn't really news. It's just a, ah, oh, look at that. Former Buccaneers quarterback going up against a former Jets quarterback. Yay. Eh, it's been talked to death already. Yep. Uh, all right. I've only got one more thing on my list here, Ren. Um, <laughs> and, and this isn't really news because we actually talked about this last week, maybe two weeks ago. But it's something that has continued to go to go forward. But Cutter confirmed in one of his press conferences this week that Levante David has been wearing the green dot. He's been wearing the yeah. communicator helmet, the mic helmet, for the defense in the last bunch of games. And right. it is true. I, I've seen several people post up pictures showing the fact that Levante is wearing the green dot. Um, it is true. It brings up and begs the question to me, why? I mean, Quan's yeah. been back. Uh, they Quan, talked about it. They talked about it today, and then no one said why. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah. Like why you could you could see why originally because Quan wasn't in there for so long. Uh-huh. You know, Levante missed a game or two. Uh, that's when Beckwith had it. But then when Levante came back, he got it, and Quan wasn't back yet. Now Quan's back. Why doesn't he? Why doesn't he have the green dot back? Uh-huh. Uh, it could be anything, though. I mean, really, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily. Obviously, you know, your mind jumps to he's playing bad or he was doing something wrong. But it it, it could be just a, a plethora of reasons. Maybe Levante can relay the calls faster, you know. Uh, no offense to Quan, but Levante is a lot easier to understand. Um, 
you know, uh, sometimes Quan sounds like he has marbles in his mouth. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I do that too sometimes, to be honest. Uh, so I don't want to make a thing out of it as like, because Quan hasn't been playing well since he got back. He, you know, he hasn't, uh, mm -hmm. one game he had a bunch of tackles, but, uh, you know, he's missed some, you know, mm -hmm. you could, you could, you can blame, uh, a lot of that Buffalo loss on Quan for not being where he was supposed to be uh, on some of Buffalo's longer drives, you know, uh, on third down plays where if he would have made the play, they would have got off the field and maybe we would have won. Uh, so long story short, yeah, you're right. It's not really news. And you did bring it up a couple of weeks ago, but I, I would like to, I would like somebody to ask the question, so I can hear what it is, even if it is just ends up being coaches speak, because mm -hmm. uh, I think we're all wondering what is wrong with Quan. You know, he's not yeah. having the year we thought he would. So uh, does the coaching staff see that as well? Or is it one of those things where, well, if you look at the tape, he's actually our most consistent linebacker, which I doubt right. I'm sure Levante is. But yeah, I would I would like to I would like that question answered for yeah it, it just it seemed like a natural follow-up from the media guys um that never got followed up and i'm not anyway i, I did ask greg allman though about that um because mm -hmm. it, it was just off of a tweet really that he had had uh, going back to that and i asked him and he and greg allman's response was he's like i'm not really sure Quan had the green dot in the opener but then it was beckwith when Quan got hurt he said i think they just thought david was best equipped to pass along the defensive calls um you know, which I mean, that's kind of a well, they just wanted David to do it. I, but the when you're wearing the green dot, you're not just passing along calls. You're you're not just a, a, a walkie talkie to the rest of the team like you're the you're effectively the quarterback of the defense. Right. That's what we've heard this whole time, since, especially since Quan has kind of gotten in there. He took it over his rookie year. And oh, my gosh, you're the you're the quarterback of the defense when you have the green dot and you're doing assignments and you know so what is it about Quan coming back from this injury not playing where he is that that it's he's not doing that part as well you know um mm -hmm. so i don't know uh and to at the same time i think these last couple of games have been some of levante's better games i know ian beckles was kind of down on levante this week in his podcast but i wholeheartedly disagree i think i, I you know, I think Levante's had had a fantastic couple of games here over these last couple of weeks. Yeah, I think uh, actually Cutter came out and said he has graded out as the best defensive player. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're going to give a, a defensive MVP, I don't think there's anyone else you could look to at all than mm -hmm. uh, Levante David. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe Gerald McCoy in like those first four or five games, but. Uh, his play, as far as like splash plays, tackle for loss, you know, being even just being disruptive, have seemed to really. It seems like he's disappeared the past couple weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and Levante Shine, I think that's like four games in a row with a with a forced fumble. Right. Um, and you know, you make those splash plays, and you know, you, people are going to notice. Yeah, dude, that they do. That they do. All right. Well, that is all of the kind of the headlines that I had for this week. Ren, did you have any before we move on to the injury report? Uh, I thought it was interesting. We're going to talk a little bit about Mike Smith. I thought that it was interesting. There's There's been this little narrative of why Vernon got moved back inside, especially when, mm -hmm. when uh, Brent Grimes was hurt. Uh, right. So that would – if you you know go in pecking order and Brent Grimes is hurt and Vernon's still playing nickel, then that would mean he's the fourth best corner on the team right now. Uh Mike Smith likes to talk about matchups and versatility, and, and maybe that's the reason why uh, Vernon wasn't moved back outside because he did mm -hmm. have a good game outside, you know, finally. Um, right, but to be and, fair, it was on the opposite side than what we've normally been seeing him play. Which might be his spot. Like which maybe that's, spot. you know, yeah. because, you know, most of us, and I mean us by us fans, uh, think that Brent Grimes will not be back next year. Um, mm -hmm. and that leaves the left side open. I can you know, Vernon slide right in. Sure. Um, but Mike Smith was asked flat out if you know you still think Vernon's future in the NFL is an outside corner, and he was like, "Well, I don't know." And uh, that's a little eyebrow raising. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's 
if he stays a nickel corner and you know becomes a nickel corner, becomes a very good nickel corner, and signs another contract with the Bucks and plays mostly nickel corner, it's hard to say it, it's a, it's a it's a bad draft pick. But mm-hmm. from where he was drafted, sure, first round, uh, yeah, yeah, and top, you know, quote unquote ten, it was eleven, but you know, we were at nine, and the whole time they've been saying Vernon was our guy, we just thought we'd drop back. I don't necessarily buy that mm-hmm. um, so much, but yeah, so a top, you know, top ten, top eleven pick, you don't, you don't pick a guy who's on the field, you know, at most seventy percent, you know, seventy five percent of the time. Uh, and nickel, he's only been getting about 50% snaps. So that, that's not, if he ends up being a very good nickel corner, it'll be a good draft pick. Just, you know, it, it will always, but you won't be able to sell me, uh, from a Buccaneer standpoint saying, you know, that's where this is, you know, this is where we had, this is the idea we had for Vernon when we drafted him mm-hmm. with the nickel spot. So, but I just thought that was interesting that Mike Smith, you know, just, uh, was not giving a ringing endorsement for Vernon, you know, being an outside corner in the NFL. And to be fair, I don't know that Mike Smith could give him a ringing endorsement to do that. Now, uh, last week, I understood why they moved Hargraves back to the nickel spot. I didn't like it. I don't know that I would have done the same thing, but I understood why they did it. You know, Bobby McLean coming back, he's the veteran guy. Ryan Smith has been doing okay over on the other side, so leave him there. Vernon did better at the nickel a couple weeks ago, so, you know, you go with Bobby McClain, who's got the the veteran experience. You put him out over there. Uh, Grimes coming back. It looks like Bobby McClain is going to be out this week. Um, It does look like Grimes will be back, and this is kind of getting more into the injury report side. Um but certainly we're going to see Grimes on that left on that left side. I am just now starting to figure this out. And this is where you know I've I've often talked about I'm not a big defensive guy. Like I I don't understand the defense. I only ever played offense in school. Um but I I'm, I'm beginning to understand that there's a big difference between the responsibilities of the left cornerback versus the right cornerback. Um or at least that's what it seems like that. Like those are almost two separate positions. So, uh, you know, I, yeah, Vernon has had a couple of good games in new positions. You're not ready to endorse him and say, yes, he's going to be fine going forward from here. Uh, I can understand why Mike Smith wouldn't do that. Right. But, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we're all pulling for Vernon, uh, at least most of us. I think we're oh, pulling yeah. for him, and we would like to see him do well. I would like to see more. I, I saw enough of Vernon when he was playing outside cornerback in Brent, Brent Grimes' normal spot. I want to see more of Vernon there in that spot to see what he can do. You know, like I saw enough good things the day that he was over there. I want to see more of that, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, well, you just might have to wait till next year. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's not going to happen if Grimes is healthy and, and playing. Uh, you know, right. if that's Grimes' spot, that's the spot he's going to be playing. So, um, Cool, man. You got anything else? Well, another little bit of, of what Mike Smith something said. Uh, he uh-huh. said, uh, and we've heard this throughout coaching. Um, so you sort of take it as, you know, like I, I alluded to before, saying maximum or – just sort of, uh, you know, a rule, just like one of those things, those cliches that you hear all the time and, and you just sort of accept it. Oh, yeah, well, that, you know, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. When Mike Smith is saying he can't put his finger on what's wrong with the defense, mm. uh, I, you know, usually just hear that and you go, well, yeah, well, neither can I. So, you know, I, I get you, Mike. But then I started to think about it. He's been coaching defensive football for 34 years. How can you not, at the highest level of your field, not know what's wrong with your defense and how to fix it? Uh, he might have been very being very generalizing, you know, sort of paint uh, with a white paintbrush over what's wrong with the defense. Well, it's not just one thing; it's pass rush, you know, phase being in phase with the receiver from the cornerbacks, and the pass rush has to work with the secondary, and you know, all that kind of stuff. But to actually admit, like, I, I have no, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what the one thing is uh, that's wrong. You know, it's, 
and your answer is, ah, oh, we need to play better. I need to coach better. It's starting to really wear thin on me uh-huh. because uh-huh. It, it's sort of flabbergasting that someone who's been doing something for 34 years and at the elite level and you ask them a question like, hey, this is broken. What's wrong with it? I don't know. Like, would you go back to your mechanic? You know, mm-hmm. hey, you know, what's wrong with my engine? I don't know. OK, right. well, just tinker around with it till you fix it. You know, just, uh, right. any, pick any, at least lie to me, at least lie to me, you know, at least make a change and make me feel better. Like do something right. Oh, well, they moved McLean to left side. So, yeah, yeah, I just that's I just thought it was a little. You know, just a little kind of like I really thought about it and I'm like, huh, I'm like, how can you sit in front of people and tell them you don't know what how to fix it? When it's your job, like it's right. just and everyone just sort of accepts it because you've heard it so many times over and over and over from, you know, all coaches pretty much from all sports at one point or another. They're just like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I if you know, if I knew I'd fix it. So I but it's but you just sort of take that response and put it to any other occupation in the whole entire world. You wouldn't have a job or you wouldn't you wouldn't be very good at it. You know, <laughs> pick something, painter, doctor, you know, nurse, like lawyer, like, I don't know. Can you get me off? I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be 50 50. We'll take a trial. We'll see. Ah, you owe me 10 grand. What? Like, I don't. Right. So anyway, that was my that's my little Mike Smith rant. Um, what else do I have? Kind of sort of dropping some of these. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, here's something, and I think this one we're probably going to talk about for a while. This might be the last one. Uh, Todd Munkin's press conference. You know, right off the bat, first question. You know, someone asked about the Peyton Barber, Doug Martin. Like, you know, mm-hmm. do we expect to see Peyton Barber run the ball more this week? And of course, everybody wants to know because he did look better than Doug. But if you actually look at the numbers, it wasn't that great. It was, it was sure. something like. 3.1 yards of carry or something. Uh, and Munkin said, you know, I think I've been up here 25 weeks in a row saying who I think is going to get the ball on Sunday. And most of the times I'm wrong. So I'm just not going to do it anymore. And then he went on to say, you know, if you play better, you're going to get more plays and you're going to get the ball more, blah, blah, blah. But <clears throat> I, that's another thing that I, I really started to think about. Uh, if your quote unquote offensive coordinator, uh, thinks player x is going to get the ball mm-hmm. and when it after the game on sunday he's wrong most of the time and this is a big sample size this is like a year and a half now mm-hmm. uh what does that say about maybe the well, obviously dirt cutter gets final say but how different would this offense look if todd munkin was actually calling the plays yeah yeah, it's it's uh, it it doesn't seem yeah. Hmm. There's so many layers to this, uh-huh. you know. Yeah, could there be like could be their infighting in the offensive coaches' room when they're putting together the game plan? Uh, I know Cutter talked a little bit about it on his radio show last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, last Friday was sort of you know all the offensive guys you know go and do their own game plan. They all come together and then they uh, and then they figure out you know, which one works best or what they're going to go with their game plan for that week. Uh, and I believe I, I asked the question and Cutter sort of sidestepped it. I was, you know, I was like, well, you know, how many times do you basically, how many times do you guys agree? I mean, do all like say there's six guys, do all six guys come in and like 90% of the time, you know, 90% of the pl- game plan is the same. Mm-hmm. Or is it there like sometimes where everybody comes in and everyone's diametrically different? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it seems to me that, like, at least as far as a running game is concerned, that uh, Munkin's idea of what the Bucks running game should be is diametrically different. And when the running game hasn't been good for a year and a half now, uh, that's when, you know. Maybe it, you go with you the s- new guy. <laughs> yeah, you start looking like it's broken. Like, we start looking for answers. You, you know, it, it it really causes me to step back and just go, I wonder how many other – teams have that same structure and same setup probably all of them you'd think so i I mean it 
you think they're that they're doing for. best practices for right um but i don't know i i'm just curious like because that, that seems so weird to me and that seems so antithetical that you'd have send everybody away let them come up with their plan and then come together and try to come up with the best thing that doesn't that doesn't seem to like yeah i don't know that that just that, i'm not an nfl coach so i can't say that that's a bad way to do it i'm why just do saying it doesn't make sense to, do to me do what why I don't understand why you think it's a bad idea or it doesn't make sense to you. Because um, it makes perfect sense to me. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, 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 honestly, this is the first time I'm hearing about it, so I'm I'm just trying to oh, okay. to kind of ab- absorb all that. I I I did not hear the same thing that you heard where they explained how that works. Um, in general, with stuff, uh, you you want people if if I am. Uh, okay, I didn't want to do this, but if I'm leading a, a, a team, okay, and Cutter is leading his team of coaches, right? Uh-huh. If I'm leading a team, I'm not having all of my team members go and put together this this whole game plan, and then I'm coming in trying to coalesce it. I'm I'm first of all, I'm That's going to empower them to to do whatever their job is, you mm-hmm. know. But then I'm going to go in and lead it. Now, I'm definitely looking for input. I'm looking for feedback. I'm looking to see what 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 my guys have, and I'm going to be the guy who makes the final call on it. But um, I'm not necessarily sending them all out to make their own game plan, you know? Um, I, I, but again, I'm not an NFL coach. I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me stop talking about that. Um, yeah. uh, I, I'm just I, – I, I'd just be you know, curious might, to know if that's the way other if that's the way other teams do it, if that's the I, normal. I, I'm sure it is. I don't I don't hmm. find that as a terribly original idea. And you have heard if you listen to Cutter enough, you've heard him say many times like who you came up under or who you who you learned from. You know. Yep. yep uh, you're right. Have, you know, in different situations about mm-hmm. talking. You know, where he learned his offensive philosophy, where he learned about you know doing a non heavy hitting training camp because you want all your players ready for week one, like all that Uh sort of stuff he picked from other places. And that's how pretty much life goes. Uh, But I think it's a, it's, I think it's a fine idea. I mean, that's how you get the best, most ideas to the table. You know, you get the most options to the table because if you all sat in the room from the beginning and the head coach goes, Hey, I think we should, you know, we're going to run, you know, the 36 uh, run back package, against the jets this week uh what if you're you're really opposed to that you know but it's Mm -hmm. your head coach who says it it's like "Eh, well you know i don't eh." so this way you're Mm -hmm. off by yourself and you can you know you don't have anybody sort of stepping on your ideas and you can bring your bring your report to the teacher here's what i think we should do and then like you said you know he goes over them all and i'm sure there's a back and forth and Mm -hmm. i i'm willing to bet that uh most of them, most of the time, are, are probably pretty close. And there's not, mm-hmm. you know, it's not week after week after week where, you know, these two guys somewhere are button heads right. about, you know, the way, you know, they should run the offense and attack, you know, you know Team X. But uh, mm-hmm. uh, I, 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 I kind of like the idea of, of sending people to their own space and, and coming up with their own ideas and then bringing it all back to the table. But to bring it back to what we're talking about here with Todd Munkin, Right. Uh, t- just even to the statement that you made a minute ago of the guy that I thought was going to be the guy who got the ball wasn't the guy who got the ball for the last bunch of weeks. So, right. you know, maybe I should stop talking about that. That that would and that's your offensive coordinator, right? right? Like I would think out of anybody in that room, your one A and one B guys are should be the guys who are most aligned. And if he comes out and says. For the last twenty five weeks, I've been wrong every single week. He said most, but Mo- well, whatever. Yeah. It's still my <laughs> the point. Still being something seems something you got to dig into that a little bit more. Yeah, um, that's but what you, that's interesting. But what you also can't do is automatically jump to think that he think that the play calling is wrong. You're right. Uh, you're you know, right. yes. because yes. as Cutter has said, every game has a flow in a, in a certain way. And, uh-huh. you know, I, I'm sure rarely games break like anybody thinks they're going to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's why we watch on Sundays. If we knew what the conclusion was going to be, we wouldn't watch. Sure. Um, so, you know, they have their own life, take on their own feeling. So you, 
Todd Bogg going to come out and say, you know, well, last week I was clamoring for Barber to come in and before, you know, I wanted Barber to start and he played better and I thought he should get out the ball at least 10 more times and I could pick out this sentence, this sentence, this is why, you know, this guy should be there. After the game, Munkin could be exactly on the same page where Dirk Cutter was play calling offensively, mm-hmm. but going into the game differently. Sure. You know, so I don't want to just make this sound like, sure. uh, you know, Munkin and, and Cutter are diametr- you know, are, are definitely opposed or that he doesn't agree with what Dirk Cutter's doing. He just, you know, mm-hmm. before the game, uh, what he thinks as far as a running back, it doesn't seem to be working out, which I find astonishing because uh, it's pretty much worked out how everyone thought it was going to work out. I mean, <laughs> didn't mm-hmm. it? It's like we knew that Charleston was going to be the third down back. We knew that. Jacquez Rogers was going to start the first three games and Peyton Barber was going to spell him. And mm-hmm. that's what happened. We knew when Doug came back that he was going to be the starter. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Charles Bims would, would be the third. And then Jacquez Rogers would spell Doug Martin. And that's exactly what has happened mm-hmm. until last week where Doug was trying to, you know, stop the line of scrimmage and do this cutback. The defensive end was there every time. And, you know, they're just like, okay. Uh, we need to try something different because this is not working at all. And that was the only surprise for me. I was going to say, and and lo, the the Bucks did try to do something different. Look at that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it's it, it's listen. Uh, you you said earlier, what would it be like if Munkin was the one calling the plays? Right. And I have I have alluded to. Uh, I have. I am not a person who bangs the drum that Cutter should give up play calling. Mm-mm. I'm not. I. I don't think Cutter is a terribly bad play, play caller. I think like every other NFL coach, there are times when they make a call that the person on TV or people in the stands are going to go. That seems like a really bad call to make in this situation. I think right. he, he. I. I don't think he's any different than any other coach in the NFL in that regards. I don't think Cutter is a bad play caller. I can make an argument from a leadership perspective that show that would be why Cutter should give up play calling and cede that to Todd Munkin if Todd Munkin is a, is capable of calling the plays. And that wouldn't just be for Dirk Cutter. That'd be for every play calling head coach in the NFL, regardless of, of which side of the ball they call the plays on. Um, that logic would apply to. So, you take it away from from Andy Reid. If if the next guy can call the plays or can do it. At, could- well, that's it's it's uh, I can make that argument. Let's just put it that way. I, we don't need to have that argument right now, but I could make that argument. Uh, and the principle transfers across the board. Um, but it, it it's interesting to think about what would happen and what would happen uh, with Todd Munkin if he was the one calling the plays, um, especially if he has said, you know, the guy that I thought would get the ball wound up not being the guy who got the ball uh, to see where that where those changes would have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a fun conversation. Mm-hmm. All right, we you got, uh, <laughs> and you know it'll be something I think we probably continue to talk about from time to time over the next uh, eight weeks or so. Uh, um, because I, if it's not dirt cutter, coaching staffing changes will occur this off season, uh, if not before, on some level, and uh, it, it'll be interesting to to talk through that. All right, you got anything else before we move on to the injury report? No, I think that's it. We've pretty much covered everything. All right, injury reports. Uh, Let's go over to the Jets real quick. Uh, We'll knock that one out. Uh, Big name there, Matt Forte, is going to be out. He is not playing this game. Uh, Defensive lineman uh, Ed Stinson. Be honest mm-hmm. with you, I don't really know who that is, uh, or if we should be worried about that or grateful. I couldn't for that. even I couldn't even find him on the depth chart. Yeah, um, as far as questionable, questionable is kind of the new probable is what they're what they're kind of telling us. Mm-hmm. Um, I, again, I I don't know these people. Um, All right, well, Morris Claiborne is their yeah. best corner, and okay. he's questionable. Uh, and he didn't participate went Wednesday and then was limited Thursday, Friday. Right. Uh, he's the guy who's going to fall around who would have fallen. He travels. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, he's one of those cornerbacks. They put on their best receiver and wherever that guy goes, he goes. Sure. Uh, so he's going to be covering, um, obviously, Deshaun Jackson. Now it's a foot. Mm-hmm. So uh, obviously it's going to be 
hampering somewhat, which is good news for the Bucks to Sean Jackson. And mm-hmm. if he can't go, then it's great news for the Bucks uh, and to Sean Jackson. Um, and the other, and then there's a couple of guys who didn't participate altogether. Uh, Jonathan Harrison, uh-huh. the center, he has participated. Uh, he went full participation and then shut it down on Thursday and Friday. On the depth chart, he's the backup center, um, so I don't okay. know if he's starting now. Uh, and then we had a uh, Muhammad Wilkerson, yeah, who of course is a big name. Everybody knows their defensive end. I do know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, shoulder foot with him. He DNP'd all week long. Right. But since he's listed as questionable, I think that's just sort of a veteran week. Sure. Uh, you know, those guys get banged around a lot, and uh, sometimes you just need to, you know. Uh, just you show up for work and you learn the game plan. You just don't go out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, once again, obviously, I'm not wishing any injury on anybody. Uh, mm-hmm. But if he didn't go, that that'd be a big help. But uh, the Matt Forte being out is sort of a big deal. But then it's not because the Jets sort of do this three headed running back attack anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so even though Matt Forte sort of leads it. Uh, you know they got this this Powell guy and, and some rookie who who it's not like these guys don't have any NFL experience. Sure. You know, they all they all get a few touches per game. So uh, yeah, so that's, Blau, that's, Blau Blau Powell I think is how you pronounce his name. I've had him in my fantasy yeah. leagues like for the last two or three years. Yeah, and he always 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 projects five points higher than what he actually gets in a game. <laughs> At least when <laughs> I've had him. <laughs> Doesn't everybody do that though? No, just just about everybody. It's it's Except for the elite guys. Okay, then I need to know who these people are who are projecting. All right, uh, moving <laughs> on. That's for, that's pretty much the injury report for the Jets, or at least anything that means yeah. much. Uh, everybody else will be participating. For us, uh, we like we've already said, Will Golston and Jameis Winston are out. Uh, the reports with Will Golston is he just he had a real bad stinger, and yeah. uh, he's trying to get over that. So uh, that is the good news. Uh, Jameis Winston's out. We expect to see him out for at least two weeks, if not longer. Uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Bobby McClain, cornerback, uh, another hamstring injury. I don't want to say if it's another. I don't remember what he had the first time. Uh, but he had a hamstring injury, did not participate on Friday, was limited on Thursday. So he is listed as doubtful. Uh, probably we will see him not play. Uh, yeah. and we, we mentioned that. Grimes will be back to that left cornerback spot. We definitely expect to see Ryan Smith on the right side. And Vernon in the nickel again. Uh huh. And then the rest of our guys are all listed as questionable. Um, Robert Ayers actually uh, did not participate the first two days of practice, was limited today uh, with uh, an ankle calf injury. Uh, so I, I would expect to see him go Yeah, uh, this week. I would too. Yeah. Uh, DeMar Dotson um, had a hamstring injury. Uh, full participation today, rested up earlier this week, uh, so he'll certainly be going. Brent Grimes was uh, full participation the last couple of days uh, with that shoulder injury, so we'll we'll definitely see him back. Joe mm-hmm. McCoy was full participation today, so you know he's not going anywhere. Uh, J.R. Sweezy was full participation today with a with a knee injury, so we'll definitely see him back. The only other questionable one to me that may or may not would be. Uh, Donovan Smith, who did not participate earlier in the week, did have limited practice today. Uh, he is still listed as questionable. So uh, probably we'll see him, but, you know, we may not. Cutter said on his radio shade show, shade, show today that it's probably going to go to the 11th hour. Like this With is going Donovan? to. Yeah, it, yeah. it's probably going to be one of those things. Show up Sunday, you know, do some warm up, see what you can do, uh-huh. um, and we'll make the decision then. Uh, I'm sort of torn between this. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, when he came out last week was the first play he's ever missed, right? As a pro, mm-hmm. um, so that's two plus years. Uh, I kind of want to see him keep his starting streak alive. Sure, but he's been on such a bad run. I thought he started. The, I thought he started the year okay, and then he played better. But these last couple of weeks, uh, and it might have been because of the knee. Sure, um, sure. Even though he wasn't listed on the injury report, uh, it did look. I, I sort of jumped on him for a lackluster, for like lack of hustle, uh-huh. on a couple of plays in the uh, the Saints game. But when he went out 
or the knee injury where it didn't seem to be like, oh, that's where he did it. It, it might have been something that had been lingering in it, and finally he just couldn't go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want like okay. I want to see him continue his his streak of starting games because he, he broke his streak for consecutive, never missing a snap. But mm-hmm. if he can't go, and he he's sort like I said, he's sort of in the middle of this of this two game slide. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I don't want him to uh-huh. play because sure. you know he's not playing his best right now uh, of the season, uh, mm-hmm. and it'd be you know one of those things, sort of like hey, Mike Evans, out. we'll see what Chris Godwin can do. Uh, even though we got to see a half of, of Kevin Pamphill out there at tackle, I, I, I still kind of want to see it, you know, see against more. a really, yeah, yeah, more of it against sure. a really good uh, front four um, defensive line. Even Wilkerson can't go. They they still got some guys up there that that can wreck some havoc. They're a real aggressive, very tough defense. Like these guys, and they are dance, gonna, and they dance. Like they these dance. guys got to punch you in the mouth, man. Mm-hmm. You know. And then dance all over it. And then uh, dance all over. Yeah, I, I mean, as as far as the injury report, um, you know, like I said, we expect to see Bobby McLean out. We expect to see – we know that Golston and, and Jameis are out. The other two guys that might possibly be out, be inactive, would be Robert Ayers and Donovan Smith. The rest of the guys look like they're going to go. Uh, I would anticipate seeing Robert Ayers go. Uh, I think Donovan Smith, with especially with what you just said there, uh, could be an interesting – uh, that'll be an interesting thing to watch. I, I, I'm not going to call that one way or the other, but that does slide us over. To. Well, we'll we'll see. Uh, that does slide <laughs> us over to um, our inactives for the week. Right. So uh, we need seven of these guys. We already know that Golston is out. Winston is out. We said that Bobby McLean is going to be out. So there's right, three guys right there. Um, jo- you know. Historically, Joe Holly, Austin Eclair, uh, or Anthony Eclair, Leonard Wester have been out. Silver Salinga has uh, been also inactive at times. Uh, what do you got for us? How, did, how would you fill out this inactive? Uh, I'm going with Silver because we having we're having problems at D and not D tackle. Uh-huh. Not having problems as in bodies. Uh, I think uh, Tap gets activated uh-huh. uh, this this week because of the Will Golston. Um, Injury. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Anthony O'Claire is also done, so that brings up to five. I think Holly will not come on because if Donovan Smith can't go, mm-hmm. uh, they would activate Wester, not Holly. So right. Holly's another for sure. Uh, what's that put me at? Six? Uh-huh. Uh, and then I guess, so that's the big question. Is it Donovan Smith or is it not Donovan Smith? Mm-hmm. And just for selfish reasons, I'm going to say that it's Donovan Smith. <laughs> all right. I've got, I, I, I've kind of got all the guys you did. Golston, Winston, uh, McLean, Holly, Eau Claire. And then basically I've got, if Donovan Smith is out, then uh, if Donovan Smith plays, then they'll inactivate Wester. If they inactivate Donovan Smith, Wester will not be, uh, you know, it's kind of a yeah. slash. It's it's one of these two guys. And right. then I went down and I did actually the same thing for Silver uh, that you had uh, with Robert Ayers. If Robert Ayers is out, I think they'll activate Silver. Um, if Robert Ayers plays, then I think Silver is our guy who sits. Um, so you think Tap, 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 I think Tap, tap and Clark. Tap, tap. Yeah, I think Tap and Clark are both going to be active. Uh, I know Clark has been active, but I, right. I, I, yeah, I, I, I would anticipate seeing them be active. Uh, Tap is a vet. I was kind of looking at some of that a little bit earlier this week. T- he's a veteran enough. He's 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 going to have picked up enough of the the playbook and stuff um, yeah. that he'll be. You know, as you said, we need people at defensive end. They went out and signed him to the active roster, not the practice squad, for a reason. We've got to bolster that defensive end, especially with Golston being out. Uh, there's there's no way that they sit a, a defensive end if they can if they can avoid it. If they do sit a defensive end, it's going to be Robert Ayers, in which case there's no reason to sit Salinga at that point. Right, because Ayers does slide inside a lot and play tackle. Exactly. So uh, so those are my seven. All right. Uh, with that said, guys, game 1 o'clock on Sunday versus the Jets. Uh, 
as of right now, I don't exactly know what's going to happen with the instant cast, Ren. Uh, we'll have to figure that out. Uh, just play it by ear. Well, guys, stay tuned. Lock in with us on Twitter, at the PeterCast on Twitter. That's where we'll make all those announcements. Uh, it might be... Uh, uh, it might be the live call-in show. Might be a little bit later. I'm not really sure. Uh, might be a uh, just to sit down with Ren and I, or we might not have one. I'm not really sure, but we'll figure that out. Stay locked might in with us. Might not have one. We'll we'll see. We'll figure it out. Uh, stay locked in with us on Twitter. We will let you guys know for sure there uh, as the game goes on. If you guys can, make sure you make it out to the What the Buck tailgate. Bucks fans united, uh, collecting money for November. Uh, testicular cancer awareness research and prostate stuff and um, everything they do. So uh, you guys make sure you do that. Join us there. Shoot us an email if you want to talk to us about anything we've talked about today to the pewtercast at gmail.com. Like we said, follow us on Twitter at, at the pewtercast on facebook.com forward slash pewtercast. We do respond to all forms of feedback. Uh, where can people get a hold of you on the internet, Ren? Easiest, best way, and this is where probably 95 percent of my social media i go through twitter uh at rendax r-e-n underscore d-a-x-t i'm always down to talk buccaneer football and you guys can find me personally at brenta allen live on twitter and throughout all the different social medias uh so there's that guys until our next show uh we've got a football game and very excited to see what the bucks are going to do um yeah, I'm excited. I don't know about the I rest of you guys. Fitz, I'm I think excited. Fitzpatrick. I think Fitzpatrick takes what the defense gives him, and Dirk Cutter's offense looks extremely more efficient, and we win a close one. Uh, I think it's going to be 27-24 with a winning kick by Pat Murray. A winning kick by Pat Murray. Ooh, uh, I'm not. I'm not going to project this one way or the other. I think it could go either way. This is a 50-50 game to me. Um, and I do think that I think that Ryan Fitzpatrick is probably going to look a lot better than a lot of people think uh, that he is. So we'll find all that out, guys. And uh, until next time, as we always say, go Bucks.